Welcome to the Blue Cafe. We offer stories of infidelity, betrayal, and redemption. Please like and subscribe. Cheers. Now, on to today's story. Me 28M have not spoken to my mom 53F since she cheated on dad 55M with a friend of his 55M, I think he is the same age as dad, I was 19 when she cheated now she has reached out. So yeah mom cheated on my dad when I was 19 with a good friend of his, it almost broke my father given that it was a good friend of his that she cheated on him with. My dad struggled with depression and trust issues for a long time and even cut out his entire social circle of friends he just locked himself away from. I took care of dad and he after therapy has gotten better and is doing okay now, the last thing I said to mom was that she was finished with me. So it's been around 8 years since I have spoken to mom, she eventually married dad's friend she even had the gall to send me an invite to the wedding. I honestly just remember the hell she put me and dad through and have no real interest in reconnecting with her whatsoever. But she sent me a letter since I have her number blocked and she is blocked on FB along with her husband. I almost wanted to tear it up and just throw it away but decided to open and read it. Mom just wrote that she has missed a lot in my life and that she was sorry for what she put dad through and have tried to talk to me many times over the years about it. She asked me to please come to her place and talk and she made it clear her husband would not be there and it would just be us talking. So I'm struggling on what to do and feel like I wanna be stubborn like I have been for the last 8 years, where I have pretended she did not exist. I also wanna make it clear that dad has never said a bad word about mom, all these years he was just depressed and lost faith in his friends and stopped trusting people. The affair had lasted quite a while right under his nose with mom and his friend lying to him for many years. He after therapy opened up and managed to deal with it, I just decided to cut mom out of my life and move on without her which was my way of dealing with it. The reason I am considering meeting her is because we never actually had a conversation about it, I never gave her a chance to explain herself and honestly just curious to hear what she has to say. Anyways just me airing some thoughts out and just can't seem to make up my mind on what to do. It's a tough situation to be in. I'm sorry for what you and your dad went through. If I were you, I would think hard about it before making any decision. I would try to figure out what are the pros and cons of this potential meeting with your mother. Maybe now she realized what she had done, but that doesn't mean you have to forgive her. The balls is in your court. If you want to meet and talk with her, go ahead. But if you don't, that's fine as well. You don't owe her anything. She may have been your mother, but after what she put you through, it's understandable. This is the best comment. You don't have to forgive your mother and you need to do what's best for you, but it is unhealthy to hold on to hate. Letting go of hate doesn't mean you have to forgive them and open your heart and trust in them. But at the end of the day you have to make that choice. I'm sorry you are even in this position. I disagree. Forgiveness is just as positive for yourself as for the person you are forgiving. Probably more so. But forgiving doesn't mean forgetting and abolishing all boundaries or trusting them again. Emo thinking pros and cons lists for emotional topics are a red herring. Your feelings are the key. How do you feel about talking to her? You said you never ever talked to her about it. Damn right you were right to be angry, but to you indicated you rolled your emotions into cutting her out, like silent treatment style response to conflict. And maybe that served good purpose at the time so you could be there for your dad. Between the lines, not ripping the letter up, making a reddit post, etc, it's entirely unresolved for you and there's a drive slash desire to resolve it. If your mom was a horrible narcissist slash abusive mother growing up and you've got bad feelings from all that and know she's just going to add bad feelings to the pile, sure skip the visit. But you didn't say that at all. At the very least you could talk, express yourself, your anger, hurt, disappointment, etc, and see where it goes. Seems it would be pretty easy to go back to silent treatment. 
or to keep the door open and say you have those feelings but you're willing to let her earn your trust slash a relationship back. This. There's no right or wrong decision here, and you can make any decisions on your own time. Well said. I'd like to add that if Op's mother lied about the affair for years there is no real reason she is going to start being honest about anything now. Be wary of her story and take everything with a grain of salt if she does choose to speak with her. I expect that she'll try to justify everything, but I don't know her. They always do. Update, me 28M have not spoken to my mom 53F since she cheated on dad 55M with a friend of his 55M, I think he is the same age as dad, I was 19 when she cheated now she has reached out. Hey everybody did not expect the first post to garner so much attention and just wanted to say that I decided to meet with mom, on the advice of several in here I decided to meet her at a public place and it was a nice day so we went for a walk in the park and just talked. She did warn me in advance that her husband would pick her up after and asked if that was okay and I said fine that does not bother me. She made no excuses for what happened and was just sorry which she kept saying over and over and I said that I almost did not show, but I am not here for you but for me and she understood that. We sat down at a bench and just talked. My question was if dad did anything wrong or was abusive. She denied it and said no. She said just developed feelings for someone else and it does not justify the years I lied to him she said, I just said to us, you lied to me too not just him. I also told her how I feel looking back at my teenage years and have had quite some time reflecting over them, and suddenly remember things that he, dad's ex-friend, was at our house when dad was away and that I felt guilty for not noticing or even connecting the dots, which in hindsight I should have done. All these small memories of you and him being very friendly with each other and like an idiot I did not connect the dots. That's what I think about when I think back on those years I told her and suddenly many things from that time made sense. I also told her that I'd never said a bad word about her or her husband. He struggled with depression and there was a time where I was worried I might find him with a bullet in the head. You and your husband, his best friend, did this to two of the closest people in his life besides me. I on the other hand decided to do what I felt was right and cut off all contact with you and no dad did not ask me to do so I made that decision on my own. Why are you writing me letters and what do you want from me now? She just said she just wanted to be in my life, I just said you should have thought about that while you were lying through your teeth for 5 years. And to think I actually liked spending time with my dad's friend. He and dad even went fishing one time and acted like a buddy to dad. Just lies and deception. How could you manage it for so many years? She had no answer to that. We talked a lot more most of me berating her but I let her speak her piece and once we were done talking. I just said I am doing fine without you. I just wanted to meet because I wanted closure and I have gotten it now. My impression is that you are not sorry about this but you are sorry for getting caught. She started to argue and just said no she was really sorry and if she could do anything so that we at least could try to have some contact she would. I just said the only thing that would even make me consider having any contact is for you to make a choice you already made, either divorce him or stay with him and no contact with me. But I am not gonna force you to make that choice because you already made it. I also said I feel I got what I came for which was closure and you wanted to speak your piece, now you have and I still don't feel I wanna have any contact with you. Just leave me alone. You made your choice and frankly I'm not angry with you, but I also don't wanna have any contact with you anymore. I felt like I went too far and acted a little colder than I would like, anybody who knows me would have said that was out of character for me. She was in tears and just told her live your life and I will live mine, but I don't want you to be a part of mine. And that was it no handshake, hug or anything, I just walked away and honestly I feel I made the right call. I remain calm throughout the entire thing, no name calling or anything, but yeah, leaving my mom crying was hard and not something I'm proud of. But I honestly wanted her to know why I cut contact and despite everything I feel lighter and ready to move on. 
I know many expected a full meltdown from me if I met her, but it was very calm and no real dramatics. I honestly had been preparing for this conversation for years in my mind. And now she knows where I stand. And that I felt guilty for not noticing or even connecting the dots, which in hindsight I should have done. It's killing me that Oop thought it was his responsibility, as a child, no less, to notice that his mother was inviting his father's best friend over for anything sinister, when there's a million reasons why they could have been meeting that were innocent, e.g. planning a surprise party, concern over a change in Oop's dad's behavior, asking for advice about a field that one was a professional in, etc. I'm glad you've got some closure, but I hope he'll consider therapy even so that was a hell of a betrayal and fallout that his mother inflicted on them all. And the part when Oop said that she didn't just lie and deceive her ex-husband, but she lied and deceived him too. I never thought of cheating that way, but yes, if you have kids it's like a moral transgression against more than one person. Yes. It made him angry that he thought of the cheating partner as a friend of the family, when his mother was sleeping with him. The part that really gets me is that if the mother had just divorced the father, she could have still had her son in her life. Edited to change daughter to son, because I'm a dumbass who can't read the title. Yes I don't get why people jump to cheating, once you realize you are feeling too close to someone else you should stop and reevaluate. You should also definitely avoid being around them alone, or while intoxicated etc. Well most feelings make people irrational. Lots of people are capable of loving multiple people at the same time. I'm not trying to defend cheaters here just spitballing some explanations. Everyone is capable of loving more than one person. Very few people are capable of doing so unselfishly, in a way that doesn't remove someone's agency. Cheating on someone puts you solidly in the selfish camp because it entirely removes someone's agency, to the point that they're in a relationship without knowing the dynamics of it. Doesn't matter how much the cheater thinks they are protecting something they love or blah blah, it's all bullshit that turns the other person into a thing being used slash enjoyed by the cheater. The reason cheaters don't end the main relationship is because they like it and don't want it to change. Selfish. They also wrap in a bunch of rationalizations that fall apart when you consider that one person is making decisions for the other entirely about what's okay. As a poly person stories like this tear me up inside. Like, a family has been torn apart over infidelity. There's a lot of lying and deception involved in cheating, and I understand that's what makes it especially heinous. But as someone who does not feel worthless when the people I duck happen to duck other people, it's so painful to read these stories about people severing relationships with folks who they love because of an affair. Son. Up is a dude. Excellent point. Great eye for detail. I am an idiot. When she started having feelings for her husband's best friend, she could have shut it down, told her husband, or gotten a divorce. Instead she chose to lie to her family for five years. Actions have consequences. He mentioned his dad got therapy. I wonder if he's had any for himself. It's his choice to do what's best for him re-contact with his mom, but I'm still hearing a lot of unresolved anger, self-recrimination, and trauma in his update, so I hope if he isn't already in therapy, he looks into it for himself. This is far too much emotional weight for a teenager to carry into their young adulthood. Some people truly don't get that actions have consequences slash repercussions. Those are kindergarten concepts, but some clearly fail don't hurt others 101 and introduction to, if you are mean you get a time out. Good for him. Parents actions also have consequences. Edit. Oop is a man. Changed. There are quite a few people talking about how his reaction to the affair is based on gender, and he would have reacted differently if it was his dad and not his mom. That is ducking ridiculous guys. As I have said in a few of my replies, Oop's problem is not the fact that his mother fell in love with someone else. If his mom had been honest, it is possible that she could have had a healthy relationship with both Oop and his father. It was the lying. She had lied for five years instead of being upfront and honest with how she felt. 
that lying bro coops trust, and I honestly don't think it is his responsibility to try to fix it. There is nothing in the post that indicates his reaction would have been different if he found out his father was lying to him. You youth. She may have done the right thing by her, but that does not automatically extend to the wider world. Assuming the damage she left in her wake was justified and would be accepted because it was what she wanted is just jaw-dropping. A slash I am the main character energy reigning supreme. Until it doesn't, and they realize that all people have agency and they aren't guaranteed a relationship with anybody, children included. This is the mindset of a child. But I want IT so much and thus it is manifest. Yay. Duck that was hard to read. I feel for him. Edit oops. By her, I hope you mean the sun. Because mom can duck right the hell off into the sun. Lie with dogs, get fleas. Good on the sun for telling her how it is and keeping her at arm's length. I don't feel sorry at all. If the truth hurts you, the you deserve it. I have very little sympathy for people that devastate the people closest to them like she did to this kid, and then expect the kid to forgive and forget, put it in the past, and for God's sake don't ever bring it up again, it might hurt mommy's fee-fees. She is lucky he didn't spit in her face as a closing argument, it would have been an appropriate last memory of her only son. I hope she dies alone and full of regret. They just mixed up pronouns. Everyone agrees with you. No idea why you're being downvoted. It's crazy that the mom didn't fully get that an affair is a betrayal of not just the father but the son too. Sucks. Nobody wins here. Cutting himself off from his mom and not wanting his mom in his life is a burden. It's a shame he feels he needs to carry it. I understand why he does. There's still a lot of animosity there. Hopefully he can let go of it. Not saying I think he should speak to his mom or that she deserves a relationship but it's hard to carry that in your heart. The only person it really hurts is him. Cutting someone off isn't a burden to everyone. I cut my dad out of my life and once the initial change wore off, I rarely think of him, unless something like this post comes up, and it's certainly not a burden to be free of him. It isn't hurting me in fact, it's definitely kept me from being hurt by forcing myself to have a relationship with him solely because we're related. I think the person above you was referring more to the burden of holding a grudge rather than cutting them off. I once heard an old saying, when you actively hold a grudge, it's like taking poison and expecting the other person to die. It's fine to cut the mom off but harboring that resentment must be very emotionally draining for op. Yeah. He's feeling righteous anger now, but he's punishing himself. A slightly ajar door, allowing for infrequent contact would also allow him to forgive himself slowly by being not so triggered by her, would have given him better long-term peace. It's a tricky one really and depends on his current and future personality, is the potential regret he'll feel later, balanced by suppressing the anger he feels towards her? It's very difficult to re-establish trust in these circumstances it's not like she can repeat it, but prove she's changed. There's a lot of anger but at the same time he also loves her. That's why he still hasn't completely cut her out of her life. I think he wants to see her suffer. I mean, he did completely cut her out of his life. He hadn't seen his mother for 8 years, and only met with her since they never had the conversation beforehand. He never gave himself closure, so he only met up with her so he could have that. It had nothing to do with her, and everything to do with him feeling at peace with his decision to cut her off. I think he wants to see her suffer. Kinda hard to do that considering he has made it clear that he doesn't want to see her ever again. In order to see her suffer, he has to actually see her. Maybe semantics and he just wants to know she's suffering. I don't know if he really cares. I am getting a serious indifference vibe from him. He doesn't care if she's happy or sad. He just doesn't want to be part of her life. He gave her a ton of shit, but I think that's more he needed to vent all these emotions he had bottled up for 8 years. But at the end of the day, I don't think he could give a duck. She's just a stranger to him now. I'm going to get downvoted for this but, I have to wonder how would have reacted if he'd found out it was his dad cheating with his mum's BFF. 
It seems like a recurring theme that cheating husbands get a lot of the benefit of the doubt because it's more in the nature of men to cheat, whereas wives get held to a higher standard a lot of the time, because mothers need to be above reproach because they are mothers, and how dare a woman who has children have needs that may not be met by her husband or how dare she feel unfulfilled with just being a mother. Her children should be her entire world and she should have needs outside giving everything to her family. Now, so I think cheating on your spouse and splitting up your family is right? Hell no. But how many times do we read posts on Reddit justifying a man for cheating because his wife was too busy caring for their home and children to satisfy him? Why do men's needs count for more than a wife and mother's? Women cheat for different reasons than men do, sometimes, and how often do men cheat, marry their affair partner, and still get 50-50 custody with no repercussions. While a mother is made out to be a monster for feeling like she deserves more than to be treated as a bang maid and baby maker slash child raiser, I will never condone cheating on your spouse, but it is also never about the kids nor is it a black and white issue. Oop has every right to not want his mother in his life, I just have to wonder if he would be treating his dad the same way if the situation was reversed, especially since he can probably identify better with his dad, being a man as well. I wouldn't be surprised if some of his righteous anger towards his mother is because of the covert biased slash beliefs towards mother and women as needing to be above moral reproach, think Madonna slash whore complex. I feel like I need to point out that it isn't even the affair that Oop has a problem with. It was all the lying and deception that came with the affair. He was forced to see how a lot of his childhood was a total lie, and he lost all respect for his mother. Because of that, I refuse to see it as a gender or even an affair issue. It's strictly a trust issue. If his father broke that same trust, there is nothing in the post to make us think that he would react any differently. How many times do we read posts on Reddit justifying a man for cheating because his wife was too busy caring for their home and children to satisfy him? Um. What? Have you been on Reddit? Cheaters across the board, be they black, white, man, woman, Martian or interdimensional cosmic beings are universally, unequivocally and mercilessly bashed and hated on Reddit. I challenge you to find any situation where men who cheat are defended on Reddit where women aren't. I don't know about other discrepancies between men and women here, but cheating is simply not one of them. Seriously send a link or something because I have no idea what you are referring to. There is r slash adultery but that isn't sympathetic, more just pro-betraying people. Yay that's a sub where they are actually pro-cheating so makes sense. Not once did I say cheating men get defended. I said benefit of the doubt and justifying, but I did not say they are defended for cheating even though there usually is at least one man who defends a husband cheating, especially in ITU and relationship advice posts. They are probably trolls, but you can still find comments blaming the wife and justifying the husband. Semantics. Defended, benefit of the doubt, lightly judged, justified dealer's choice. Either way it just doesn't change redditor's reaction be it a woman or a man. Of course you'll find dissenting comments giving the benefit of the doubt. Your comment is a perfect example of one, ironically giving bot to the woman. This type of comment, the what if it was the opposite sex argument is found in every post at least once, regardless of sex. It's pretty evenly distributed and always unpopular. Don't mean to sound hostile, but it's just not true. I'm justifying someone for doing something wrong is defending them. Using different words doesn't magically change the meaning. You yourself are justifying this women's behavior by saying people would complain less if it was a man. It's ridiculous and hypocritical. Oop seems very moralistic and black and white about things. He is in denial about his anger and sense of betrayal and seemed to get some kind of grim pleasure in hurting his mother. His mother probably made many sacrifices to raise him, including possibly staying in a loveless marriage until he was 19. He doesn't seem to think about any of that. He doesn't seem to make any real effort to empathize or understand what his mother's motives would be. I know people get massively downvoted for seeming to support cheating, but I really don't like this kind of posts that hate on people who make mistakes in relationships. 
especially people like Oop's mother who see through their responsibilities to their children and who have gone on to have a long-term relationship with the person they cheated with. People are human, they duck up. It doesn't mean everything about every relationship they have is now toxic or beyond the pale. Cheating doesn't make someone an irredeemably bad person, it just makes them weak and flawed. They still deserve love and kindness. And I don't know. The way Oop spent so much time relishing the way he cut down his mother. I got a bit of an incel fantasy vibe. Making mistakes in a relationship you mean a woman who lied to her husband and son for five years straight? And cheated on her husband with his friend? That kind of thing leads to major trust issues. She didn't just kiss someone on or have a one night stand, which are both still awful things to do, but those could be seen as mistakes, she cheated on someone for five years. That is unforgivable. He doesn't seem to make any real effort to empathize or understand what his mother's motives would be. Wrong kind of empathy. You make it seem like he isn't empathetic. He is, to the main victim in this, his dad. He just placed his empathy in the right place emo. People are human, they duck up. Yay and so is Oop. He gets to choose how to react and feel. Cheating doesn't make someone an irredeemably bad person, it just makes them weak and flawed. They still deserve love and kindness. Neither does stealing or raping or perpetrating domestic abuse. Doesn't mean that they are owed a relationship with the victim or victim's family. Doesn't mean that love and kindness need to come from the victims. She has plenty from AP. Actions have consequences, accept the consequences and move on. She deserves to be happy, with other people. Honestly, this was the best ending ever. You kept your cool, she broke down. She probably felt horrible and a little child. Good. She ducked up, you made her feel for it. We hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Please comment, like and subscribe. Cheers. Have a wonderful day or night. Wherever you are.